What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now this is part two, day two of me working on this prototype Camlock leg voice build. So I have a fully functioning prototype now. I'll take you through it. So we have a full range of motion. We can clamp any size timber we want now out to about eight inches. And if you wanted to go out further, you could, but really going out past eight inches, there's no real need. So you load of you guys commented on the last video. You came up with some brilliant, brilliant ideas. So this is partly down to you guys that this now works. So I took up some of your ideas, I ran with it, and uh, yeah, we have a fully functioning voice now. Just needs some refinement, we need to just make a few new parts and uh, refine the mechanism like we did on the last video, and we should end up at the end of today with a fully functioning um, prototype. So, let me take you through what we've done. Okay guys, here is a look at our new mechanism and it's an interlocking sawtooth design. So it gives us a full range of motion out to eight inches and you could go further if you wanted, but I think eight inches is more than enough, anything more than that. And uh, yeah, you need to put locking that onto your bench to be working on it. So a bunch of you guys came up with this idea. So give yourselves a pat on the back. It is a great idea and it works really, really well. So we still have our original tenon bar in place. The pin is now gone and we're now using the sawtooth as our clamping mechanism and it works perfectly. So, a couple of things to look at here. Our mortise now had to be widened on the bottom on this side, or lengthened I should say. So we just took, I took an inch out of the bottom and an inch out of the top on this side. So it's a now an angled, slightly angled mortise, which allows you to get this motion. So you can tilt down and lock in, tilt down, lock in, tilt down, lock in like that. Now, it has to be pointed out that this, um, table was perfect for it because I have this cross piece and this cross piece is now essential to the design because the tenon bar sits against this so obviously this could tilt if this wasn't there the tenon bar now would tilt up because it has a range of motion inside in the tenon now if you see what I'm saying or inside in the mortise here so it needs this bar or this cross piece I should say as a stopping mechanism to stop it tilting up too far and keeping your voice level. Now, I'm gonna to have to remake this. I'm gonna to have to make it slightly tapered. So as you get to here, to keep the level, or to keep the voice level with the top of the bench, there's a bit of a centimeter of a gap. You can't see it on camera. So that needs to be down a small bit. So I need to remake this bar now with a slight taper on it. So that as we move all the way out, the top of our leg voice stays level with our bench the whole way out. It's only a small thing, but we might as well make the best one we can. So yeah, that's how it now works. So you're going to need a cross piece between your two legs for your tenon bar to, to stop against and then the sawtooth design works perfectly. Now I'll show you on the outside with the floor wedge. Okay, so like I was saying, we've added a floor wedge now. So again, one of you guys sent me a video. Again, I think the guy's name was Jay Bates who made the video. He uses a floor wedge with his particular leg voice and it works perfectly, keeps everything parallel and it gives you extra clamping force, which is perfect because it gives us now a full range of motion to any measurement we want, we can clamp. So, nice and simple, I have my floor wedge in place instead of my block. Just open up my voice, drop in my piece, lock it home, and now that is jammed in there. And if you want a little bit of extra force, just give your wedge a little bit of a tap, and now you've increased that force even more. So, that is solid in there again, not going anywhere. You want to clamp a ticker piece, not a problem. Just lift up our mechanism, slide it forward, knock your wedge into where it needs to be. Open this guy up. Now, you've clamped an even bigger piece. And we can do that the whole way out, just in tandem with our sawtooth and our floor wedge. And again, if we need to cinch it up, just knock in that wedge. Okay, so now we have a fully functioning um, leg voice with a full range of motion and uh, everything is working the way we want it to work and we have a serious clamping force maintained with that full range of motion in conjunction with the sawtooth and the floor wedge. Now, today what we need to do is make a new pin for this. So I have a piece of sapili here. I'm gonna make a sapili pin to go in here. Some of you, one of you guys recommended mahogany. I don't have any mahogany, but I have some sapili there and the contrast in the wood should look nice. Also need to make a proper floor wedge. This is like I say, only the off cuts. So I'm gonna make a proper floor wedge. It won't be as long as this, obviously it'll be a little bit shorter. 
and we need to make remake our tenon arm. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Also, in order for this to be a little easier to use, I'm going to cut a hand hole here and a hand hole here. Now I'm going to leave the thickness in it because I quite like using the fo my foot on the end here just to lock it in place. It's nice and handy. It's, it's the right height for your foot, so why not use it? And you have all that force in your leg to clamp and lock that in place. So that works perfectly. Another little thing in this design that we have to do now is put a pin here just in front of the leg voice itself because if this slips forward what happens when you go to um, move in onto the sawtooth if it's moved forward it kind of locks itself against the bench and makes it hard to get into the next um, say tooth set so what we need to do is keep the leg voice right here so we don't obviously want to lock um, the pin too tight to it we need that little range of motion for the cam lock to work so we just need to put a pin just in front of it, a small pin just in front of it, again, make another mahogany pin there, just to keep that um, leg voice in place so that when you're lifting it in, it doesn't, it doesn't slide forward and lock itself against the bench, making it hard for you to move in on those teeth. So there's a few little adjustments we're gonna to make today, and then at the end of the day, we'll see exactly where we are with this build, but I reckon we're almost home. We have a good mechanism, we have a good range of adjustment, and uh, with the floor voice and the saw too that you guys came up with, I think we're on a winner here. So let's get on it. Okay, I have most of the sheet of plywood yet left, so you can see what it takes from an 8x4 sheet. It takes about a third of the sheet to make up all the parts of the voice. But uh, we're going to cut some more anyway. So, my tenon arm, I've just used this one as a template. Now it's going to be a lot longer, so I've added about, I think, 16 inches to it overall. So, 400 mil, and uh, it's slightly tapered now, so it's about a centimeter wider at the end, so 10 mil at the end wider now, so just to allow to keep that voice level with the top of the bench as it's moving out. So that's that. Then I've just marked for two hand holes, so I drew a center line down my cam arm lever and uh, I'm gonna use this 32 mil forstner bit to drill through at four inches and four inches here, so two four inch hand holes. We'll drill it out with the forstner bit, we'll square it off with the chisel, we'll take it to the spindle sander, we'll sand out the inside of it then, that'll give me two hand holes in in this guy. Down this end of the board then, I've just marked out my wedge, so it's just gonna be two boards laminated together, so drew it a rectangle, come in two inches. I've eight inches here, two inches this side, eight inches here, two inches this side. So that should be good for my wedge. I'll just flip these two over and mirror each other, and that'll be my double thickness uh, wedge. So I'm gonna take this board outside to cut it with the circular saw, cause it kicks up a lot of dust, and uh, when I have all that cut, I'll get back to you. Okay, there's our new tenon board cut. We have our hole drilled in it as well, so it's only a case of sand this going now, run the hand plane down both edges just to flatten them off. We have our lever handle, our cam handle, drilled out now, so we can just knock these sharp points off with a chisel, run this spindle sander up through here just to sand it out, make it nice and smooth for our hand. Here's our wedge piece. This just needs to be glued and screwed together. Again, run the hand plane along us just to match up these two edges, and uh, it'll be happy days. So I'll get on that, and when that's all done, I'll get back to you. There's not much to it. It's just a bit of chiseling and a bit of hand plane and a bit of sanding.
Okay, we have all our pieces and our pins made. So everything is sanded up and just hit it with some boiled linseed oil like we done in the last video. So uh, it's time to assemble this thing now. So let's get on it. So our new tenon board has to go in first. That'll have to be slid through from here. Just like that. There, that guy there. That's nice and stiff, that's what we just want. So that's our new Sapili pin in. Now, this is our floor wedge, which will sit like that. Nice and simple. Now we need to reinstall our mechanism. Let's do that. Okay, we have our mechanism clamped in place and I've tested everything is good. So you're gonna need to leave enough space so that you have enough tilting action to skip the first set of teeth. And as you go on, you will get more and more um, movement. So the further out you go, the more action you have and the tighter the, these teeth will close up inside in here. So when you're out this far, they're just catching on the edges and they'll start catching more and more as you go in and you will have a wider range of motion. So you can go deeper and deeper into the, into the saw set, let's say. So that's clamped on there and it's working. So let's get some screws home with this guy. I've put a spacer in behind him. So um, a half inch piece of plywood in behind that just to allow for our step in our 4 by 2 or 2 by 4 here so that it, this guy is flushed with this guy. So, drive home some screws now and we should be good to go. Okay, the next piece of the puzzle then is to put our small pin in here. Now this is just, like I explained earlier on, to stop this leg slipping forward because it makes it a little bit awkward when that slips against the bench at an angle like that. It then pinches our tenon board and uh, stops it moving in and out. So we don't want to stop this moving too much. So we're just going to keep it, I suppose, five mil, not even five mil, a couple of mil in front of it. So it allows us for our clamping force, but just stops it moving. So it makes it easy to use. So again, I've just made a 20 mil or 25 mil um, Sapili pin, and that's just going to sit in there just like that. made him a little bit wider so we have to pack that I'd say but uh, it should do we might put two split pins in that actually to keep that guy in there so that's just going to stop this fella sliding forward now keep some keep some locks in there so we can use our mechanism just like that nice okay guys we are all ready to go everything is sanded oiled or floor wedge is in place the peely pins are in place our mechanism is adjusted and working well. I had to add another little guide rail to that. I'll show you that now in a second, because it was torquing the tenon bar, or our, yeah, our tenon bar was getting torqued under pressure. So it was kicking slightly to the left. So two guide rails just to keep that dead center seems to have solved that problem, because we have a lot more clamping force now with this floor wedge. So it is torquing the bar a bit. But uh, yeah, it's nice and simple now. Just open it up, put your piece in place, and lock it down. And that is jammed tight in there. And you can stand here and plane away nicely. Nothing is in the way. You would think the floor wedge is in the way, but it actually isn't. It's actually in under the table a small bit, so my foot can stand here. It's not in the way. My leg is against my bench. I have plenty of room here, so that's not an issue. Clamping force is still superb. I have the two handles are working well, so handle top and bottom. If you want a little bit more leverage, just put your hand to the bottom. You can really lever it down or use your leg if you really want to force that thing in there. And if you really want to tighten it up, just give that wedge a little kick and that thing is drum tight. So yeah, I'll give you a look at the mechanism in action now. Okay, there is our mechanism now complete and I had to put two guide rails in place. So we have one either side because there's so much torque now in this voice that it was causing our tenon board to flex and to fishtail at the back. 
So it was popping the teeth a small bit. So if you banged the device, the teeth would pop and it would lose grip because it's under so much pressure. But uh, with these boards in place now, it's holding this um, tenon board nice and straight. So it's like a guide rail system for it. It works perfect now. So we're happy days. So you can see the mechanism there now. So you just drop it down onto the next set of teeth, onto the next set of teeth and so on and so forth until you get all the way out to about eight inches and then use your um, floor wedge in conjunction with that. So you can see, loosen it up, drop it in and it clamps in place. Just like that. Right guys, there we go. One cam lock leg voice with a saw to latching action at the back and a floor wedge. So I think we can call that now a fully working prototype. There's still a few adjustments we can make to it. There's still improvements that can happen down the road. But for now, that is a fully functioning working prototype with a serious clamping force. And we have eight inches adjustment all the way from the bench out to eight inches. So everything works which is absolutely fantastic. Again, thanks for all your suggestions. They really helped in this project. So you guys can claim some of the credit for this now as well. So I'm gonna hand it over to you now. You can start building your own ones, see what you guys can come up with, see if you can improve upon the design. And uh, I think it's a good principle. I think it's a good concept. I think it's a good prototype. So I think, uh, yeah, it's nice and simple, completely made out of wood, exactly what I set out to do. So no metal parts required and every single one of you could build this in a weekend in your workshop and have an extremely powerful leg voice. Um, yeah, so there we go guys. It is unbelievably hot in here, so I'm gonna get out of here now. It's time for a cold beer and we can celebrate our Camlock prototype leg voice. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. <laughs>